Rules of Engagement for Effective Conflict Resolution, 2024 style. It is important to know how to properly handle a situation where someone claims that you have hurt, insulted, or upset them. Instead of taking accountability for anything you may or may not have done, employ the following techniques. Avoidance. Do not take calls or return text messages from the accusing person. If you see them in public, make sure that you have an urgent matter that you must attend to and are unable to talk at this time. Oh, hey, hey, can I talk to you about something? Sure, what's up? Um, so what you said the other day, it really hurt my feelings. Uh, and you I, know what? I hate to interrupt you. Actually, I can't talk right now. I totally forgot. I've, I've, got, a, I've, I've got a thing. Eventually, they will tire of trying to talk to you and things can go back to normal. <sighs> Always remember you are not responsible for someone else's feelings. Denial. Play dumb. Pretend not to remember the conversation or event. Tell the other person that they must have misunderstood or misinterpreted your words or actions. This technique is also referred to as gaslighting. You said it to Susie too. I haven't even talked to Susie. Actually, she sent me a copy of your text message. I've got a screenshot right here. You know, text messages aren't even reliable because they can be edited. They're not even admissible in a court of law. <laughs> if this is exactly what you said to me that hurt my feelings in the first place. I don't remember it happening that way. You must have misunderstood. No, I heard you loud and clear. Well, maybe I didn't word things exactly right. You know I wouldn't say mean things on purpose. But this isn't the first time you've said something like this. You must have me confused with somebody else. Always remember that if you don't admit it, it never happened. Shifting the blame. Sometimes the other person needs help remembering that they also make mistakes. If this seems to be the case then you should remind them of all the times that you feel they have wronged you. While they're busy defending themselves, they are likely to forget about whatever they're accusing you of doing. If they do remember, they'll feel too guilty to pursue the issue any further. You hurt my feelings all the time, but I don't bring it up. When did I hurt your feelings? The time I needed to talk to you and you wouldn't answer my calls. You mean the time I was sick with COVID? You never said anything about having COVID. You just ignored my calls when I really needed to talk to you. I don't think that's the same thing. I was too weak to even pick up the and phone. Now you're refusing to acknowledge that you hurt my feelings. But I'm not making a big deal of it, am I? Fake apologies. Remember that if someone is upset with you, it's their problem, not yours. Give the person an indirect response that acknowledges the fact that they're upset, but reminds them that you had nothing to do with it. This satisfies the demand for an apology without you having to take any accountability. I trusted you with that information because we've been friends for so long and I thought that we could talk about anything and everything, but then you said that and it was just like, really? Look, I'm sorry your feelings are hurt, but you are way too sensitive. And you just act like it's nothing, like it didn't even happen. And you just go on about your life and I'm over here still trying to figure things out. You know what? 
if something I said offended you, hurt your feelings, I apologize. If I had said this to you, first of all, I wouldn't have said it to you, but if I did say it to you and you came to me, I would definitely, I mean, I wouldn't, you wouldn't even have to ask me twice. I would absolutely apologize because I care about you and I would never want to hurt your feelings. I, you know, I will. I will absolutely apologize, but you have to admit that you've hurt my feelings too and you didn't apologize. I just don't even think you care. I just, it just doesn't even feel like you care. I regret that your feelings are hurt. <sighs> Future faking. Assure the other person that you do want to talk to them about this matter sometime in the future, but not right now. If you do this enough times, they'll eventually lose interest in having the discussion altogether. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I'm glad I caught you. I've been trying to get in touch with you so we could talk about what you said the other day that hurt my feelings and... Uh, maybe work through that. Uh, you know, I do want to talk to you, but now isn't the best time for me. This is really upsetting to me, and I want us to talk about it so we can work through this and repair our relationship and not have these problems again in the future. I'm not ready to talk about that right now. I haven't had time to think about it yet. Let's talk later. The red herring fallacy. Distractions can be extremely helpful in situations like these. Help the agitated person to realize that there are much more significant issues with which they should be concerned. Hey, hey, I'm really glad I caught you. Um, I was hoping that we could talk a little bit more about what we were talking about the other day when you had to go and about, you know, what you said that, that, that made, you know, hurt my feelings. I know you're upset, but there are so many problems in the world right now. Have you heard about that new fake meat that they're growing in labs? Um, Ew, disgusting. You really should research it so that you'll understand what it is and you will know what to look for because that is terrible for our health. You need to protect yourself and your family. Invalidation. Do not be tempted to give in if the other person seems to be depressed. The reality is that they're simply feeling sorry for themselves. Just because they're choosing to throw a pity party does not mean that you have to attend. Instead, gently but firmly let them know that you are not interested in taking part in their delusions. You're still upset about this? Yes, I'm still upset. You know... You shouldn't allow yourself to get this upset over something so minor. It's minor for you. It's minor for you. You told Susie, Susie, of all the people in the world, the town gossip. Now the whole world is going to know what I said. And it, 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 it didn't even happen that way. And she's just, it doesn't even matter because people are just going to believe what they hear. Her reputation is ruined. I hope things get better for you. But that is not even the way that it happened. Like, I didn't even say that. And the way that you you, you portrayed it to be that I, I'm saying something I didn't. That's not even how that happened. Like, I, I, now my people are talking about it on social media. Like, I'm getting looks from people now. Yes, I understand oh. your concerns. From your perspective. Why won't you just talk to me? I don't do drama. Oh, God. Oh, I don't even believe this. The whole town is talking about me. And I don't even have my best friend anymore to comfort me. You know what? I'll pray for you. As a reminder... It is not a requirement to have spiritual or religious values in order to make an offer to pray for someone. The belief that you care enough to pray for them is enough to deeply soothe a distraught individual. Plus, it has the added benefit of reminding them of how much they need help. If you are concerned about going this route, just remember that you don't actually have to follow through with the prayer. 
You just have to assure them that you will do it. Ghosting. If your accuser persists, feel free to end your relationship with them without giving them any prior warning, explanation, or closure. Remember that you don't owe them any explanation for not talking to them anymore. It is your right not to have anything to do with them. Traditionally, it was customary for both parties to issue a sincere apology to one another in order for a conflict to be considered resolved. Thankfully, that archaic tradition is no longer in practice. So if the other party chooses to apologize to you, you are absolved from any responsibility or guilt involving the matter. No further action is required on your part. Wait, wait, hey, just please hear me out. Please just hear what I have to say. You've been my best friend. For the longest time, we grew up together. We went to grade school together. We have shared everything together. I know everything, you know everything, I tell you everything. And I hate when we're not talking to one another because I miss you. You're my best friend. I'm sorry that I got so upset and that I blew things out of proportion. I just don't want us to fight. Can we please make up and please just get through this? I'm really sorry. Cool. Oh. So does that mean we're back on for Saturday morning coffee? Well, yeah, I mean, but I just thought we, cool. I'll see you there. Oh, uh, don't forget, it's your turn to pay. Oh. Oh. Do not be dissuaded if the person begins to show signs of severe depression, hopelessness, or suicidal ideation, as these are only a cry for help that you aren't qualified to or obligated to answer. If they are truly feeling this way, they'll make the logical choice to seek professional help and not bother you with their problems. On the off chance that the person does commit suicide, do not blame yourself. They obviously had issues to begin with. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can kill you.